Hello everyone. Today we're gonna to discuss demand management capabilities and how they influence supply chain strategy. Let's start by defining what demand management means. It is a focused effort to estimate and manage customer demand with the intention of using this information to shape operating decisions. As this definition implies, demand management is much, much more than just forecasting. More accurately, it's about integrating demand and supply. Integrating these two sides of the business is challenging, but it can facilitate improved communication, collaboration, and coordination across both functional and organizational boundaries. If we successfully integrate demand and supply, then basic supply chain flows will improve along with overall efficiency and effectiveness. Demand management is very important. Let's take a look at how demand management, often called demand supply integration, or DSI, works. In any firm, there are two basic sides of the business, the demand side and the supply side. The demand side of the business consists of marketing and sales who work to create product or brand awareness and eventual customer sales. Downstream supply chain partners are also part of the demand side of the business. In contrast, the supply side consists of the core supply chain functions like sourcing, operations, and logistics. Those are the folks that plan, source, make, move, and help sell products. Upstream suppliers are also part of the supply side of the business. In many firms, the demand and supply organizations are not integrated, do not communicate much with each other, and even blame each other for problems. The famous business scholar Peter Drucker referred to this gap as the great divide, and he lamented how adversely it affects firm performance. Demand supply integration attempts to bridge the great divide by facilitating cross-functional integration through a sales and operations planning process. Sales and operations planning is often referred to as SNOP. The process starts with the submission of a demand forecast and a capacity forecast. These should be the best estimates of how much inventory a business will need to satisfy customer demand and how much inventory the business can produce in an attempt to meet customer demand. Inevitably, these two forecasts will not match up perfectly. Either a business will commit to sell more than it can make, or it's producing more than it can sell. Both of these scenarios are problematic and lead to decreased service, increased costs, or both. This is one of the most basic problems that plague businesses, but it is normal to expect demand and supply mismatches. The key is to identify those mismatches and develop appropriate plans to bring demand and supply back into balance. Best practice says that senior management should be involved in this process to provide insights that could help everyone understand strategic priorities. Likewise, finance should provide input regarding financial goals and requirements of the firm. By sharing forecasts, strategy, and financial goals, decision makers will have a much better idea of the opportunities and problems at hand. All major areas of the business will have a voice and should contribute ideas to resolve imbalances. After a sales and operations planning meeting, plans should be aligned in a way that balances demand and supply. The SNOP process will produce a demand plan that gives clear direction to marketing and sales. This plan may require additional efforts to grow demand, things like promotions, advertising, price reductions. Or there may be focused actions to reduce demand, things like price increases or reduced incentives. An operational plan is also produced through the SNOP process. That plan clearly tells sourcing how much to buy, it tells operations how much to produce, and it tells logistics how much to move. Additional supply requirements may require paying more for expedited raw materials, or overtime pay in factories, or the use of premium modes of transportation. However, all these requirements would be presented and agreed to in the sales and operations planning meeting. Beyond having balanced demand and supply plans, the sales and operations planning meeting produces a financial plan that's aligned with corporate strategy. Consensus is gained through this process and everyone should be marching to the beat of the same drum. Firms that effectively implement and integrate supply and demand will have a competitive advantage. However, Integrating demand and supply is not very easy. Very few companies do this well because of internal power imbalances or politics. For example, some firms are completely driven by powerful marketing and sales groups. In these organizations, 
the uninhibited pursuit of sales at any cost dictates that aggressive sales forecasts become the operational plan. Capacity constraints or capabilities are ignored, and the supply side of the business should just figure it out. Senior management and finance are often uninvolved in these organizations, and this is a recipe for disaster. Because costs eventually skyrocket or service levels plummet. These firms go out of business because they either disappoint too many customers due to unrealistic promises, or they cost themselves out of business by trying to expedite everything. Another common demand supply integration problem occurs within organizations dominated by finance. Typically, the demand plan is driven by commitments that were made to Wall Street investors, and the artificially forced demand plan then becomes the operational plan. This scenario suffers from the same fate. Because there is no actual integration of demand and supply, the process was not informed by those with the most expertise in each area. Instead of a well-conceived plan, this is simply an ill-advised mandate that often results in higher costs or lower service. Perhaps one of the worst problems comes from a highly integrated and well-communicated demand supply integration process where a demand plan is simply ignored at the last minute. Usually this occurs when everyone within the organization is aligned in taking appropriate actions, except for the marketing and sales group. These teams are so sales focused that they may simply decide to create as much demand as they possibly can instead of managing demand according to the demand plan that they agreed to follow. Ultimately, the same adverse results occur, higher costs, lower sales, or both. However, this situation is even worse than just having a strong sales and marketing team because in this scenario, people within the organization who worked hard to produce the plan feel betrayed because the agreements were not honored. So the best way to integrate demand and supply in a firm is by implementing the full sales and operations planning process. But what about the broader supply chain? How can firms integrate demand and supply with their supply chain partners? Well, as we said earlier, the demand side of any business includes marketing, sales, and downstream supply chain members. Likewise, the supply side of any business includes sourcing, operations, logistics, and upstream supply chain members. These extended supply chain members should already be part of the existing sales and operations planning process that integrates demand and supply within a firm. Think about a retailer who effectively integrates demand and supply. In order for the retailer to have any idea of what their capacity forecast is in terms of what they can supply to the market, they need to be integrated with the sales and operations planning process of their manufacturers to understand the manufacturer's supply plan. At the same time, the manufacturers need to know the retailer's demand plan so they can develop a demand forecast for their own SNOP process. Although the retailer and manufacturer each conduct their own demand and supply integration, they both have critical inputs into each other's individual SNOP processes. Or said another way, firm level SNOP depends on inputs from other supply chain members. These dependencies are not limited to retailers and manufacturers. They cascade throughout a supply chain to supplier suppliers and customers customers. Both the concept and the process are quite complex, but potential benefits are well worth the effort. Effectively integrating demand and supply throughout a supply chain helps all businesses do things better, cheaper, and faster. And from a strategic standpoint, integrating demand and supply through a sales and operations planning process will reduce both demand and supply uncertainty. And by reducing these uncertainties, it enables strategic movement that results in lower costs, better service, and more timely responses. So in conclusion, Integrating the demand and supply sides of the business can be challenging, but if it is done well, it can have great rewards for your business. If you can successfully integrate demand and supply and bridge that great divide, then your firm will achieve a competitive advantage. <laughs>